This guitar is called Brownie and it's from 2009. Now, it's the first guitar that I made out of mahogany and uh, made a big impression on my, my group and um, we all decided that we liked the mahogany body a lot. No surprise there, of course. Mahogany is a lovely material, sounds great, and was used, still is used for lots of flat top guitars. Anyway, uh, today I'm gonna I'm going to uh, cut a new bridge, a taller bridge, for this guitar. Um, this is the bridge that I supplied with the guitar, and I have since. Um, discovered that a taller bridge not only gives me a little bit more down bearing and loads the top better but it also gives a, a lot more leverage so that the string can get a better uh, purchase on the bridge and drive the top in a more powerful way so I've done a bunch of these conversions and they've all been successful. I'm looking forward to hearing what Brownie sounds like with the new taller bridge. So if we look at this original bridge, we'll see that it's uh, quite thin and hollow. Um, I think this bridge weighs just over 20 grams. So very lightweight, less than an ounce. And it has a, a plastic top um, which is wear resistant and uh, gives it a little bit of a crisper tone than, than uh, if it wasn't there and you were just leaving the strings to rest on the ebony. So here is the new one. Um, the, the material is removed, but it's not finished on the inside yet. We'll get to that. Uh, obviously, the outside is a little bit rough too, just machine marks on this. Um, these surfaces are, are nicely finished and uh, in due course we'll have to work up these surfaces and get these to be pretty and polished as well. So this bridge is a, a little bit bigger, but um, I'll cut down the length uh, before we install it and I'll show you I'll show you why that's done that way later on. Okay, so the first thing is to have a look at the grain on the bridge and make a determination of which way we're going to put it on the guitar. So since the bridge in this, at this moment is symmetrical, um, we can choose to install it either this way or this way and um, so if we look at this this way we have the, the grain on the bridge is pointing up like this as we look down and we see that the grain lines are running off this way and this way in the ebony and likewise or opposite wise <laughs> um, here we have the grain lines going this way. So from m my aesthetic sensibilities say that this is prettier and more restful looking than that. This looks kind of surprised to me and this looks stronger and quieter. So here's how we're going to do it. And I'm going to put a mask piece of masking tape over here to remind myself that this is the treble side of the bridge. All right, so the next thing is, um, I'll put the bridge where it goes on the guitar. And I already have a mark in the middle of the bridge so I can center it visually with the center line of the guitar. And then I have this, um, this stick that's uh, cut to the scale length. So I'll make sure that the bridge is in the correct orientation in length. 
And now I have a pencil with uh, a little tape shim on the bottom that's going to make a line on the bridge, and and it'll mark. It'll mark a nice line. Start cutting to that line. So we have our line here. Didn't make a mark out here because it's a bigger gap. And on the back, we got a line almost to both ends. So that means that we're going to have to increase the shim thickness in order to get out to this, the end of this bridge. Okay. So here, I'm going to cut to this line, um, but instead of cutting this way, I'm going to deliberately tilt the bridge up, not that much, a tiny bit, so that I, I'm not in danger of hitting the opposite side because I can't see the mark on that side. So I'll have to get in tight here to see what I'm doing. <laughs> Now we have a shape that we believe in, and uh, with a scraper, I'm going to approach these outside edges. Now remember, this is kind of uh, angled here from our last our last operation. <laughs> 